Hello, this is Quackmaster Dan. Today I'm going to be showing you how to take a stock Xbox 360 and modifying it to the point of being a fully JTAG system. That means you can save Xbox 360 discs to a USB external hard drive or the one that sticks on the side. You can save Xbox Live Arcade games, run emulators, play old-fashioned, old-school games. You can run homebrew software. Um, that can be everything from new games to a million different programs. Um, you can edit your game saves, you can install map packs, and I think kind of most importantly you can have a whole new interface which uh, the most popular right now is called Freestyle Dash. Um, so in order to have your JTAG, your system be able to be JTAGged, you have to have a kernel version that is 7371 or lower. You can identify your kernel by going to My Xbox, Console Settings, System Info, and on the right hand panel there will be kind of a, a K which means kernel. 2.0.0 and then there's uh, four digits and those four digits are your number. If you've got 7371 or lower you're in good shape. If it's higher like 8955 or 9199 you simply cannot JTAG your system at, at this time until someone invents a new hack. So to start off with I'm already assuming that you have taken apart your system you've already soldered on all of your LPT wires and um, your and you already know how that, like basically you're set up in order to download your NAND. However, I'm going to uh, tell you what tools that we need to get, and there are there are quite a few of them. Um, almost all of them come from the XBINS file repository, which is essentially a huge FTP server that contains tons of different Xbox hacking tools. Um, normally you go in through IRC, and you go to a certain channel and type in some words, and it's called XBINS. And it's it's the auto expense. Uh, this basically just simplifies everything for you by um, automatically logging in and uh, taking you to the FTP server. So right now I'm going to open up Firefox. Okay, so I'm just going to pop in that link, download a RAR, just open it up. It's really small. It's just a single exe in there. Um, all right, so I'll just drag that out. When it connects, sometimes it takes a couple tries in order to get into XBINS. The reason being that uh, it doesn't have identification, so some IRC servers simply just don't allow it to connect to them. Um, but usually after a couple tries, it'll always get in. So right now it's going to try this one, and we'll see what happens if it gets in. Yeah, it looks good. All right, so in just a bit, it'll connect me in there. Okay, and I'm in. Um, everything's located in just a regular folder structure, and I've got a whole bunch of links here. I'm not going to download everything in this video because there's a lot of stuff, but I will. Um, I'll download a couple just to show you how it works, and I'll explain what all the tools do. So first, we'll snag da Dash Launch. This basically is a program that, um, when you turn on your system, when you press the power button, it'll immediately boot into whatever you want. Generally, people make it auto boot into Freestyle Dash just because it's a whole nice interface and you don't have to manually find it every time. So it's an Xbox 360, dashboards, XEX menu, and uh, dash launch version 1.0 for 91.99. So snag that. Um, freestyle dash, this is the actual operating system. Right now the official version is at 1.20. 2 is supposed to, supposed to be coming out fairly soon, but right now I'd say just use this. Um, it's located here. Freeboot Toolbox Maker, this is available on his website bestpig.fr, so France. For FTP you can use whatever you want. I use Flash FXP. You can also use um, FileZilla. That's a, that's a pretty good one as well. And it's free. Um, as far as emulators, you know, go back there. Uh, Genesis Plus 360, that's You'll see there's three of them. It's, uh, it's that one right there. So you just download these different folders. NAND Pro 20B. Um, in my experience, it's important that you use the B, though there's other versions all the way up to E. I'd just say stick with this right here. Um, it's at this link. It's kind of different that um, it has to have a custom driver installed. If you're running XP, Service Pack 2, or SP3, you'll um, generally run this one right here, port 95, it comes with it. If you're running Windows 7 64-bit, 
Um, you'll need to be running this 64-bit NAN Pro UP USP SPI driver, um, and I think XP64 is, is this one right here. Um, SNES 360. This is just a Super Nintendo emulator. Quick Boot. This is a program that creates shortcuts on your system. So when you press the Xbox Guide button, you can uh, just instantly launch any program that you want to. Um, you do need a thumb drive. It you don't really have to have it, but it just makes life a whole lot easier. Um, the 360 only recognizes it if it's formatted as FAT32. This, the Xbox One emulation pack, generally called the Venomous Fire compatibility pack. Um, I've got a link here. Just Google it. Um, it lets you play any Xbox One game ever made, since Microsoft didn't really support all of them. Xbox 360 flash dump tool. This lets you look at your NAND or your, your flash, your operating system. It'll tell you a whole bunch of data about it and let you take out different files. And, and you can learn a lot about your system and stuff we need to know for this. Um, Zell is it's what's called a bootloader. It's, it loads immediately when you press the power button on your system. And for our purposes, it will get us uh, two things. The first is our CPU key, which is essentially an, an encryption key that everything on your 360 has to have to work and there is Zealous, which is essentially an upgrade to Zell and has a whole bunch of nice features like you can access everything through a web page. XEX menu, this is a disk. Quite simply, it's just a file browser and it lets you manually explore your whole operating system, um, all your drives, and you can just manually run something. It's time to dump our NAND with NAND Pro 20B. Um, you should have your Xbox 360 plugged in. Um, the power cord should be plugged in, the video cable should be plugged in, it doesn't have to go into a TV. The ring of light board or your RF board should be plugged in. The 360 should be off and there should be some sort of metal ground between the systems, uh, whether that's a wire that's connecting the 360, the, the, the case of the 360 to the case of the computer, um, and of course connected the, into your parallel port. So um, I suggest you just make a folder uh, right on your C drive called NAND Pro, it makes it nice and easy. Um, and in here you should extract NAND Pro, obviously. So open up a command prompt, which is start, run, cmd. Um, cd is change directory, so change NAND Pro. And uh, this is the command right here. Um, different Xboxes have a different size NAND. If you have a Xenon, a Zephyr, um, an Opus, or a Falcon, all of them have a 16 megabyte um, NAND. Some Jaspers actually can have a 16 megabyte NAND, but they're kind of more rare. Uh, if you have a newer Jasper or a Jasper BB, which you'll just kind of have to look up on um, various schematics, you should you should know this when you're you should have already found this out. Uh, that that number can be 256 or 512 for whatever your dump is. Um, so let's type in the command NAND Pro. The target is LPT dash read 16 org.bin. That's just a general term for um, your original raw version NAND of your system. I have a Xenon, so I'm, it's only 16 megabytes. I'll just hit enter. This is going to take anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes. Um, it'll slowly count block by block, and when it's finished, it'll hit 3AFF. Looks like I'm very fortunate that I did not get any, uh, any errors at all. You can get a couple 250 errors, which just means a tiny read error, and that's no big issue. It is a problem, however, if you um, if you get lots of errors, like if you get over over 10 250 errors, then it then it's a big issue. Um, but this looks pretty good to me. Uh, once you have one NAND, you need to get a second one. So just type the command, make it org.2.bin, and uh, do a second read. This is just standard practice. So. Hit it and grab another cup of coffee. Okay, we're going to take our original dot bin and original two dot bin, and we need to compare them to make sure that they're identical dumps. So I'm going to type in fc file compare org dot bin org two dot bin slash b, and hit enter, and it should it'll start comparing. Hopefully, it'll say it's identical. It won't give me any errors. Okay, good. Uh, no differences, they're identical. So now we're going to take Xbox 360 flash dump tool and um, we're going to look at our CBs. CB is essentially a number that uh, um, it is 
it allows certain programs to run. So we're going to go to keys, make sure your CPU key is blank. You do want one BL checked. Um, click open file, click your original dot bin. They're, they're both the same, either one works. And it'll say my CB. So right here it's 1903, which means awesome. It's, um, it's below 1921, which means my system can be exploited. Um, most of them, for the most part, as long as if you're underneath that number, if you're in the green, you're good, you can JTAG your system. If you're in the red, I'm sorry, um, your box cannot be JTAGged. Generally, that really, that's not going to happen unless your, um, your kernel's too high anyways. Now, um, as far as JTAG wiring, um, you can, there's plenty of pictures on this on the internet, so you can, you can find out whatever suits your box. I'm going to open up a command prompt, change my directory to nanpro. I'm going to take our SMC hack. So right here, um, Zell, th there's a different version. Just check what you have in this list. They all have a different name. Uh, the 4580s treat them, the Zephyr 4580 treat exactly like a Falcon. Um, yeah, I've got the Xenon 1921, which I've got on my desktop over here. So I'm going to open that up um, in WinRAR, and I'll just drag it out. Yep, so that's in there. And I'm going to take Zealous. And we're going to take um, we're going to take Zell 1F out. Actually, I see in my guide I accidentally wrote 2F. Uh, 1F is the one that you want. So just for kicks, I'm going to, to make things easier. I'm going to rename the Xenon hack free60.bin. And you can just leave 1F as it is. And we'll need to take our key vaults. Yeah, okay, fix that. We'll need to take our key vaults out of the NAND and inject them into Zell so it will boot. Because if you don't do this, um, it simply will not. Um, as far as extracting the key vault, you can also do it from a file. It doesn't have to be through the LPT cable. Uh, whatever has that colon after it, which in this case is original.bin, um, it'll extract it from that. It's actually quicker. So let me pop open NAND Pro here. Um, NAND Pro original.bin colon read 16 key vault 1 dot bin uh, block 1 and line 1 and it'll really quickly just extract that out to a file okay good and I'll do it again alright great we have two key vaults now I'm going to do our config file um, that's located yeah, urge dot bin colon r16 it's in block 3de and it's two lines long so hit enter and I'll do it again, and this time just change it to config-2. Okay, great. We have both of them. I'm going to be injecting uh, Zealous into free, uh, sorry, into the key vault into free60 right now. Um, so you can see what I did right there. Write 16 key vault. Line one, block one, line one into free60.bin. Next, we're going to be injecting Zealous into Zell. Um, make sure that we're using a, a, um, a plus symbol and a capital W which is write raw so colon plus capital W 16 zell dash 1f dot bin and uh, block 40 is where it's going to start and it will continue to the end of its file um, 1f is for zell and older versions of, of rebooters 2F is if you're trying to update um, Zell on on XBR3 or uh, the kind of the current free boots. For, for this case, though, we're really only going to be using Zell dash 1F. Okay, good, and that's injected, solid. Okay, now it's time to write Zealous into the 360 through the LPT cable. So I'll write NanPro LPT colon write 16 free 60 dot bin and start at block zero and continue to the end I think it's five zero blocks long so it it shouldn't take too long it's pretty small yeah yeah five zero okay so just wait this one out 